Hi, this is Ross from Visai. Uh, this video uh, concerns the configuration of the IP network regions inside Communication Manager and by extension uh, Session Manager as well. Uh, the reason we wanted to cover this off, uh, it's really uh, IP Telephony uh, 101, uh, Part 1. Um, Visai Service Management is often deployed by customers and business partners um, seeking to resolve voice quality issues. Uh, the natural go-to point uh, for most people, uh, the natural inclination is to go into availability management and start looking at voice quality. So in the VQM section. Um, uh, what we're saying here is that this is um, actually not the starting point. You should actually start to look at configuration. The, the reason being is, is if you have things misconfigured, and you go into voice quality management, uh, run your reports, start building up a pattern of poor calls, and uh, the way those calls uh, transit the network, what components they touch, uh, and then identify network segments or individual network components that appear to be uh, the issue. Um, if you report that through to the data networking people, uh, involve them, perhaps your um, WAN service provider, uh, you can often end up uh, coming back on a you know, putting people to a lot of work and then they come back to you and say, well, the reason we're seeing high latency uh, packet loss on these connections is that you're exceeding the size of the real-time queue with your application, uh, or the other side is that you're incorrectly uh, tagging uh, the packets, or your end device is sitting in the wrong VLAN, that type of thing. So uh, part one of Voice Quality 101, uh, is to look at the configuration of the network region. Uh, part two, uh, which we'll cover in a separate video, is looking at the IP endpoints uh, and how they're set up, how they're tagging their packets and, and so forth. So network regions. So into configuration management, if we pull down an as-built schematic. So once a week, uh, the Visai service management application runs a routine to look at the IP network configuration and convert that to a network schematic, network diagram. So I'll pull that down, I've got the latest one there. That's now down on my local workstation. And if I open this up, it's going to start Visio and draw out the network region configuration for me. Now I'm using a, a customer here that's got a nice configuration, so they or their business partners done a nice job of this. Uh, and this accurately reflects the logical layout of their network. And the example we're going to use is a call from uh, Hornby, which is network region 45, uh, transiting the network to another caller that's in uh, network region 70 there in Hamilton. So communication manager and session manager both have to understand what's going on uh, behind the scenes, so within the network for these calls. They've got to understand how the audio is routed. So they can't control how the, the um, packets get from A to B. This has nothing to do with that. This is simply saying when this type of call is made, uh, under this call scenario, this is how the, the, uh, the network routes the call. And some very good reasons, uh, reasons for understanding that. So in this case, the users in, in Hornby, Network Region 45, the audio goes up their local WAN segment into the Christchurch Metropolitan Area Network. It then comes down this WAN segment here into the national uh, national WAN uh, across the segment here to the Hamilton Metropolitan Area Network, and then finally down to the to the user in Network Region uh, 70. Now, the reason that Communication Manager Session Manager have to understand that uh, is that each of these WAN segments has a real-time queue. Now, this one here between Hornby and the Christchurch Metropolitan Area Network. That's between uh, 45 and 237. Um, that will have a size. You know, it's not an unlimited connection. That will have a, a, a size um, of real-time queue set aside for voice and video. Uh, and more importantly is this, this connection here between 237 and network region 240. Now, it's obviously a shared uh, network segment. So all traffic that's hanging off this Christchurch metropolitan area network area all traffic from these sites to any other site uh, will be transiting uh, across this segment here. 
and obviously that's a, a thing that's um, very, very fluid. So communication manager, session manager have to understand exactly how many calls are going on the segment at any one time, uh, the codec they're using, and uh, and by that uh, inference, you know, working out the, the uh, amount of bandwidth that's being consumed. So this network segment here may be capable of supporting, say, 40 calls at G711. Um, if this is misconfigured, so we've got a misalignment between the size of the real-time queue and, and what's actually set on the on the network, or what is more common is that uh, people directly connect network regions and say Hornby can call Hamilton directly. So there's no understanding that there's a WAN in here. Um, as far as communication manager or session manager are aware, if you do that direct connection, that, that's a, a LAN connection and it has unlimited bandwidth. You know, if you start doing that, then this real-time queue here is exceeded, and, and instead of limiting the calls at 40, you start putting 50, 60, 70 calls down this path. All you do is drop the voice quality for everyone that's on that uh, on that segment. And in that case, if you go into voice quality management in VQM, the segment here will be identified as being a problem when in fact it's not. It's back to the configuration. <coughs> So the configuration is put in place specifically to limit the traffic on here. Uh, if these WAN segments get full, you can use a feature called IGAR, which will take the voice media directly via the PSTN uh, from this site here to that one, directly via the PSTN. The user is completely oblivious to that. They don't know that that's happened. Um, but that's reliant on, of course, there being media gateways at each of these sites. Uh, if there aren't any media gateways, uh, then we should use call admission control to deny uh, that call from happening because all it's going to do is drop the call quality for everyone else. So that's the main reason for that uh, for that configuration and, and it has to be done correctly. Um, if I erase that, we'll jump across and see how that is actually configured inside Communication Manager. So I jump on Firefox here. I'll use Versailles uh, Access Concentrator that's available to business partners as part of uh, Service Desk. So you'll notice with Access Concentrator is that VSM automatically detects all of the points of administration within the customer. Uh, so in this case we're looking at an Avaya Communication Manager, uh, the main production site uh, in Albert Street. We do an SSH connection uh, to that customer. That's going to make a connection from my workstation here uh, all the way through to the communication manager. And there's the login prompt from the communication manager there. I log in using uh, my credentials. So this connection is directly via the, the tunnel uh, between my workstation and the communication manager, the remote end. So there's our, there's our SAT session. And if we look at Network region 45. We'll have a look at how that's configured to talk to network region 70. So we go forward a few pages and we're looking at the inter-network region connection management. So my source destination uh, up here, source destination 45, uh, calling destination region 70. So by doing that, I'm going to use codec set one. So that's an important thing. So we know what codec to use. But the call transits through network region 237, 240, and 234. So we pull up that uh, Visio again and have a look at that. So that's just um, overlaid with our session. We can see indeed 45 connects via 237, 240, and 234 to get into 70. So each of the um, each of those hops uh, will have real-time queue um, assigned. So for example, if we look at this one here between 45 uh, and 237, so same form of course, so source destination is 45. The intervening region we're looking at in this case is 237, the Christchurch metro area network. We'll see there that's the size of the WAN connection. So it is 512 kilobits. So this connection here, real-time queue, set aside for voice and video, 
512 kilobits. Now, each of these segments uh, will be the same in their respective network region forms. You'll be able to look up those and, and see uh, how the whole thing fits together. So very, very important part of, um, of IP telephony is getting this right. And uh, there are a lot of misconceptions out there as to how to configure this correctly. Just close down that session nicely. Um, and I'll uh, show you some good examples. So this is a good example, uh, as we've discussed. Um, I've pulled up some other real-world examples. Um, I've done this in such a way that we can't identify the customer. Uh, but if your network region schematic that's produced by VSM looks like this, uh, looks like a wheel, um, chances are you've got it wrong. Uh, this is showing, if I go through various sites, this is showing that uh, every site can talk to every other site. So whoever's done this configuration has kind of said that this is a, uh, this whole thing's done on a, on a LAN, uh, which of course it's, uh, it's not. So the real time, the size of those real time queues um, are not going to be respected. Um, voice quality 101, that's going to be a problem. Uh, the call quality if real time queues are exceeded is just dropped for um, everyone who's using that network segment. So uh, call, uh, voice over IP call quality uh, part two, it will be covered in another uh, video regarding the IP endpoints. I uh, hope you found this helpful.